this fly is tied in a Waddington shank. And this is a finished piece, so this is assembled. So the fly has been tied on the shank and then the hook has been attached at the back of the, the shank. Now, if I start by showing how I would fit the hook, fit the, the shank, um, I'll then go on and fit the hook. So the shank itself is like this. It's got a loop at the back and it's got a an up eye at the front. And to tie on these, you tie them without the hook fitted, or that was the way that they were intended. Because the joint between the hook and the shank is intended to be flexible. So you can't fix this with the, the hook. And this part is where the hook is going to be fitted. So that's the, the shank in my vise. Now, having the joy of a rotary vise, I can turn this and have the, the shank at the, the, the required position and actually fish it. If, sorry, I'd actually tie with it the other way. So there, I'm in the position where I would, that's how I would tie on this. When I'm tying on these, I'm tying from just behind the eye there, um, down to about here, and no closer to this joint than that. And the reason for that is there's going to be a piece of tubing between uh, keeping the, the hook in the right orientation. So once this is tied, I then have to fit the hook. So my next step is fitting the hook. Now, if you look at this, the the way that this is set up, the this eye is horizontal when this this eye the the the, the real eye um, at the front of the hook is turned up. And if I fit a double on there, the points are going to be going off at at that angle. If I fit a treble, which is what this was designed for, it's going to be no problem at all. But we now want to fit, or I want to fit, singles. And that's where um, we, hit, we strike another problem. Because a normal single, if I found one with a big enough eye, the point would come off at right angles to the eye, which is not terribly desirable. So what you need are these, which is, it's an inline... Um, sing it's a specially designed single. It's an inline single with a large eye, which is not fit in the vice. So that's what I need. This is actually a, a size eight. It's a bit, a little bit small for this shank. Um, but we'll do the job. So the next step is to fit the tubing. And what you do is, this is how I do them anyway. With the, the hook in the vise, I slide a piece of tubing onto the, the hook. It has to be tight over the eye. Um, okay, so it's slid on, it's cut, and then it's pushed a little bit further, so I'm revealing the eye. You can do that fairly tight because the, the tubing is so flexible. And then it's just a matter of getting the, the, the eye into that, um, gap between the two returns and now that's what would happen without the tubing <laughs> it would be too flexible if you like and the the tubing once it's slid forward and it has to be tight so it is going to take a bit of persuasion to get over that um, big return come on There we go. Yeah. Get the hook back in position. Um, you can see that it's the tubing's just holding the, the whole thing in position. It's still flexible. And this was Waddington's innovation, if you like. And what he wanted was to have, um, what he intended was to have trebles like this. Um, fitted on the back of his shanks 
and it would have been the same as uh, the treble that was fitting on a, say, on a, a spinner like a Toby, or um, uh, they, at the time they used some minnow type. Um, they actually used some dressed minnows, uh, which were uh, the fish preserved and then fitted with, with uh, trebles. So they were very familiar with these small, strong hooks that were catching big fish. The other thing that's going on here, there's a lot of wire. You can see there, there's a lot of wire involved in that fly. That fly is going to end up about this length. So it's a it's an inch and a half fly. It's not a big fly, but it's an inch and a half fly. But it's going to have some weight and it's going to sink. And Waddington's idea was that um, he wanted flies to get down there. Um, he, he was... Um, he wasn't like um, Wood on the D, who was fishing lighter and smaller flies that were fishing sh fishing quite shallow. He was um, of the opinion that you want to get down under the current and things. And of course, his shanks lent themselves to that, so you could get a fairly weighty fly um, tied quite simply. These are always tied; at, they were intended to be tied in the round. They don't have to be tied in the round, but with the vices and things that they had at the time. Um, and or tying in hand. Um, tying in the round was a bit of a, an innovation and it simplified tying hugely. Uh, commercial fly tires must have been um, both pleased with it and, and a bit intimidated by it because these were easier to tie than um, the, the winged flies, the feather winged flies that were current at that time and remained current for the next 20 years after Waddington's um, introduction, innovation. So this was this was a, a, a quite an innovation. Um, tying in the round, weighted, um, uh, you know, some of the, the shanks that I've got here are quite uh, hefty. So this was a, a means of depth control. It was um, using smaller hooks, which were, um, flexible so that the the fish didn't have as much leverage on the on a on a fly because at that time if you wanted a big fly if you wanted an inch and a half long fly you needed a shank you need a, a hook a solid hook with a shank that sort of length um, and it, it meant that there was a leverage issue um, it's not clear to me that the leverage was was um, quite as big an issue as an awful lot of fish were being caught and there were other ways of um, dealing with that problem. For instance, Wood dealt with the problem by using smaller flies um, in his grease line book. And that, that was from 10 years before uh, Waddington was coming up with his ideas. Um, and he was only up the road on the spay. You know, he wasn't, he, it wasn't as if he was on a different um, part of the world. He was still on the east coast of Scotland. The... The modern advantage of these things now is interchangeable hooks, flexible shank, bit of weight, and I can go out with a, the reason I was attracted to these, and this is going way back, is with a 10 foot rod and a 7 weight line, I can fish this little thing, it sinks well, so I'm using a floating line, a decent length leader, and in effect I'm using the sort of tackle that I was using on fisheries. Um, where I'd be fishing a, a bead head um, often. So I was used to a fly of this sort of weight and this sort of configuration, so it sinks, w it sinks well. Um, it was an easy transition for me to go from um, fishing at a fishery where I was fishing a, a, a lure, a weighted lure, to a si still on a single-handed rod, fishing a, a sea trout or salmon river. Um, I'd be fishing the Dawn or the Devon with these um, Warrington shanks.